Yeah, more LN2 stuff today. EVGA is proud to announce their all-new XR1 OBS certified 4K capture card. Record at 1080p60 while you game at 4K60 with HDR with advanced pass-through mode that allows you to switch to 144Hz refresh rate at the press of a button, meaning no longer do you need to disconnect or disable to get the full capabilities of your display. To see the full list of capabilities and configurations, click the EVGA link in the description below. So you guys know me. Um, LN2 horror now these days. I'm going after some SLI scores because I've never done SLI LN2. I imagine this is gonna be hard. I've got two Kingpin cards. Got the pots on both of them. I went ahead and put the original card on the first slot and the new card that I'm not so sure how it does on the second slot because I have a feeling that the one that I can't really get to go beyond like 2550 is gonna be the average card, which means this one should be able to hit at least that. We're on a whole new platform too. This is our X299 platform. I did that because one, slot spacing for this guy, because this only works with four slot. Two, this particular board will give me two, is that hitting on? It'll give me two 16X PCIe 3.0, unlike the mainstream platform, which will only give me two 8X. My biggest concern is gonna be whether or not these start to slip out of the slot. But look at that. That is just a big chunk of graphics. I also had to buy a new thermometer. My other thermometer only had a single input. This one now has two. This is like a $479 thermometer. It sucks to spend that much money on something like this, but if you look at the Port Royal two-way SLI scores, I've got some people breathing down my neck. Corsair Lab and Slick PC or Slinky PC are just like right there, way too close for comfort. I can't have that. So we're gonna go ahead and just do some conservative overclocks on this, get our score well above the 3,250 or whatever score it is right now. I think my new goal is gonna be like 32,000, somewhere between 32,000 and 33,000. We've got two 1600 watt power supplies here. I think I've already showed you a single card can, can pull over 800 watts when it's on LN2. Oh, I was like, we don't have video though. Going for that there Bluetooth video. I hate this. I dealt, I dealt with this with the 3090 for the Win 3 cards as well when I was doing SLI. And I ended up using a single power supply for that, but I'm not gonna be able to with this. Like SLI just brings up such a stupid, unnecessary complication. I hate this so much. Why do I do all this? It's stupid. Shut down, will you? It's the other thing I've dealt with. Like this system sometimes doesn't want to shut down. That's what's telling me. There's like a, something's wrong with this board. It's like a feedback, power feedback or something going through there. I don't know what. But before I even bother trying to cool it down, I gotta get into working OS. Like it's stuck on FF again right now for fail, fail. And SLI doesn't show up. See, ah, NVIDIA, you suck. Right, let me go ahead and shut it down, restart it and see. If, it's con if it continues to give me a problem, then I'll switch the bridge. Cause I do have a second bridge. Cause I was dealing with this with the last, the last SLI run I did. Uh, I started to suspect I had a bad board or a bridge. So, now SLI shows up after a reboot. Now I've got to fill up my thermoses and start bringing the temperatures down. One thing to keep in mind is that even with SLI and such, the top card is always under the most load. It's gonna have the most temperature. The second card doesn't go under as much load. Now it will obviously have a lot of uh, temperature because of the frequencies we'll be pushing. However, it's the first card that is our most concern. I've never poured two cards before. This is gonna be interesting. So I'm starting to fear that something's wrong with this second card maybe because I'm getting these constant black screens and it just froze. What is happening? I hate this system. I hate this system. Why is it freezing and crashing and stuff? And last time we were running the CPU with a uh, ice water, and now I've just got this AIO, so I have a feeling I'm running into some CPU problems here. Because what happened is the driver completely borked itself. It just completely screwed up. And yeah, look at that. CPU's at 47C right now with AIO. And then I'm gonna reduce this clock to like 51, because I do not feel 
that 5.2 is going to help us at all in this. But in SLI, however, we do want to get as much bottleneck alleviated by quad channel memory, fast memory. We just need the CPU to survive uh, like a like a 5051 run and it'll be fine. But I'm hovering the temps now at minus 33 on the top pot, minus 39 on the bottom, because I don't dare go any colder until I at least get these graphics cards and the drivers working properly. It's like craziness happens when you put a second card on there. See, I just installed the driver and it's coming back looking like this. And this is not the first time I've experienced this. See, it's not here. So there's no driver installed right now. If it comes back big fat letters and it didn't. See, force reinstall driver. I'm trying to, but it won't work. And then it keeps doing this because Windows keeps getting involved. And I'm pretty sure I had uh, the auto install of drivers turned off on it. The thing is now I can't let it warm up. We've gone sub-zero, we have frost. Now we'll have water if I let it get too warm. All right, so I changed the SLI bridge and all of our problems went away. We got into a weird driver loop. Um, it was totally corrupted, changed the bridge, everything worked flawlessly after that. So I'm pretty sure that that's a bad bridge back there. So thank God we had the second one. Um, now we can go ahead and start overvolting and overclocking and bringing the temperatures down. We're at minus 50 on both. Look at that. Look how close I got the temperatures. Not bad, huh? I feel like I, if I get real good at it, I can do it like this. Just, just, just cool everything like that. Just pour it all over the board, Jay. Positive that's come out of these pots sitting here cold like this for so long now is they are fully cold. They are cold all the way through. They should be easier to keep the temps down. All I care about is beating my best, which should absolutely not be a problem. I'm at 30,259. Slinky PC is right behind me at 30,184. Corsair is at 29,788. Kingpin's at 33,758. He's not revisited SLI in quite some time. That's only at 2,550 megahertz on the core, which I got on single card, but I'm fairly positive I will not get anywhere near that today. That was a mess. Oh, boy, it's running away. Dang, okay, they're under load for sure. Okay, they're within like, Six C of each other, seven C. Oh, crash, crap. Dang, see, it crashed at 2400, which is significantly less than our 2565 we were able to run on single card. So, as you can see, things in, in SLI are much harder. So I think I need to up the voltage. The sounds. We didn't get that many sounds before. Just, just pouring it all over the motherboard. Thirty-two thousand oh eighty-seven. Okay, so I'm gonna save that one, unlike I did last time. All right, so now I've got a pretty big lead ahead of where second place was. So now what I need to do is fill these up again and go again. A little more frequency. I added more core voltage. That's what got me stable. Now we'll try for like twenty-four fifty. I'm telling you right now, it's so hard to get the pores like consistent when there's two cards. No. Okay, shoot. Regardless, I'm okay with the 32,000 because this is my very first experience with SLI LN2. The insulation came off right there because I poured it in between and it went, nice. And if it got down into where the mount is, then that mount is Dunsky's. And I don't plan on remounting it today if that's the case. Rinse and repeat. I know, a lot of people told me they find this interesting. I feel like it could be a little boring, but I'm doing the work, I might as well take you guys along for the ride, right? Oh, right when I heard the crack, it, it froze. I think we might have just lost our mount. So some of the cracks that you hear is the foam on the outside when the LN2 hits it, it makes it hard, listen. See, it makes it hard. And then you'll hear that cracking and making noises as it temperature changes. But that was a much more muffled, deep crack, which sounds like it might have been the thermal paste on, on that one just going, uh, and just completely cracking on me, which means now I, Depending on how hard it cracked, might need like a straight up remount. Mm -hmm. One for me, one for my homies. Oh wow, that was a lot of LN2 I just poured on the CPU. And it's going on the floor. And it crashed. Right at the end because I over poured. Jay, you're a moron. People think like, wow, Jay just can't pour something. No, it's not that. You, it's invisible bubble there that it's like splashing off of. You can see the force that it's coming out of the pot. I'm pretty close together. 
Aww. All right, let's go ahead and restart it. Let's upload my, oh, okay. I mean, same spot, huh? You keep crashing right around the same area. All right, that's it. We're gonna upload my score. Let's give ourselves some interwebs and let's just make sure that Slinky PC sees he's got a ways to go. Validate. <laughs> Validate why everything's breaking. Come on, let's go. And did you know that you could actually take a score, send it to someone, let them upload it, and it'll be under their name? Yeah. There it is, 32087. So yeah, we're almost 2,000 points behind him, but that's fine. We have more in it. I, I know for a fact I can get a 33,000 with these cards with a little bit of tuning. The hardest part, honestly, is consistently pouring it without getting all over the motherboard and just, yeah. But hey, almost 2,000 point increase today by not even that much more core clock. We were 2190 average megahertz before, and if we look at this run, we were average megahertz 2400. Memory was slow. Although my memory is about the same speed Vince's was. He, he was only running 1500 megahertz just like we were. Um, on single card, just you put it in comparison. Comparison? Wow. No, it's not the oxygen displacement. Look at, Phil, show him the size of this room and the fact that we have ventilation. I'm not Phil. I mean, Nick. <laughs> Nick number two, or Phil two. <laughs> Phil one, original Phil. Make up your mind, is it the Phil one or the Phil two? <laughs> <laughs> but look at Vince, he was at 2550 when he got that score and we were at 2400. So if I got it up to 2500, I'd be clearly about 33,000, I think, or high 32s. We can see uh, Slinky PC, he was at 2190, and our previous run was also a 2190. Um, that's what tells me like, oh crap. If he had gotten his memory speed up to where ours was, then he could have matched our score and or beaten us. So with that said now, this is where we are. So if we look at his detailed result though, average temp 30C, so he was just on water, right? Just like we were. So unless now he goes LN2 or something like that with modified boards, he's not gonna, he's not gonna catch us. And that's, that's all he wanted. I saw someone on our, t on, our, on our tail there, right in our heels. Steve's way down here still. He's not really even bothered competing in the SLI race. But there we are, 32087, I'll take it. Guys, thanks for watching. I'm gonna warm up these cards and get them off the test bench before they turn to water. And uh, we'll do this again, but I'll, I'll, I only have the tank for so long before it all like burns off, right? So I'll do it again. Maybe next week, now that we didn't have to spend half the day putting it together and figuring out why it wouldn't boot, considering it looks like we had a bad SLI bridge, because as soon as I put this one on, everything was fine. And it's also completely possible that the reason why I'm getting the weird crashes at the lower frequencies is we're starting to get ugly power because we're still only running one power supply. So I'm pretty sure that's what's holding me back right now. Asking for more voltage and the power supply can't give it that's why we're getting these crashes at a certain certain limit. So we'll start to get weird crashing before we actually get the power supply to like overcurrent protection or anything like that. I need to get both power supplies running. That way I can um, make sure each card is getting clean power. But 32,087 with a single power supply and two L and two 3090s says a lot for the 1600 watt power supply. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and as always, we'll see you in the next one. So just kidding, we're not ending the video just yet. So Phil, was like, he walked out here, he was like, do you think the bridge might have been the reason why it wouldn't boot with two power supplies? Well, with the new bridge, I was like, well, let's go ahead and check. So second power supply on, doesn't turn on the system. First power supply on, doesn't turn on the system. Remember, I was like, why is it turning on? All that time, I could have been using two power supplies for a nice clean delivery for the graphics cards. Now that I know how far I can go with a single power supply, next time we'll do it with two power supplies. I guarantee we were running out of clean power on one power supply with how many watts. Dude, one of these cards will pull over 800 watts by itself when it's L and 2 We already verified that. What's 800 plus 800? 1600. What's the rating of this power supply? 1600. What else needs power? Everything. Everything. Else, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This, these cards are getting too warm now because they're gonna turn into water. Thanks for watching guys, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.